All right, Sean. Well, when I boarded a flight to come over to London, I was not anticipating to sit down with Sean O'Malley. And how does uh, how did this all kind of come together? And then you you hopping on a flight to get out here and promote this fight? Yeah. Well, the whole London trip came up pretty uh, pretty quick. I was in Miami, and the UFC called. And they said, "Hey, you want you know you down to come to London, go to the press conference, and and promote the fight." I had heard about the fight obviously a little bit before everyone else, so. Mm -hmm. You know, when you t when you get opportunities like this to come and you know expand your fan base, mm -hmm. of course I'm gonna take it. Um, super quick, like you know, went to went, or was in Miami, went home for 24 hours, and then flew straight here. Um, Got to fly back uh, tomorrow morning and, and get ready for Peter. Yep, yep. Uh, obviously, we're, we're gonna talk about Peter a lot, but I want to go back to July 2nd real quick. Obviously, it's a frustrating way for the fight to end. You told um, reporters that night, like, I'm not even thinking about a camp. Obviously, people wanted to know, like, what do you want next? What do you want next? How quickly, it sounded like the UFC came to you about this, yeah? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was healthy. The fight, he didn't hit me, you know what I mean? So I was, I was healthy and frustrated, um, you know, right after the fight. Like, I could have just cried. I, I didn't, I, I was super emotional, didn't, wasn't really thinking about, like, what's next. Um, but after I told UFC I'm ready to fight, and, and you know, in my eyes, I just beat someone in the top ten. Mm -hmm. People don't like like that. But uh, Peter was the only one that didn't have a fight, so yeah, I'm surprised he took it, to be honest. So that's how it happened. You told the UFC, "Hey, I'm I'm ready to go whenever." Yeah, I said I told them I'd like to fight again. Um, what do you guys got for me? And they said, "Well, Peter's the only one without a fight. Let's see if he wants it." Mm -hmm. So. I, I, like like I said, I'm surprised he took it. You're surprised he took it. Oh yeah, it's a. I mean that's a, 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 a it is a good. There's a reward though. I mean you beat me. I, I'm the biggest name in in the bantamweight division. One of the biggest names in the UFC right now. So, you know, I, I mean in that sense, I'm not surprised. But not being as rank, ranked very high, I guess you can't get ranked higher than Peter anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's interesting because. I know a lot of people, people's reaction to this fight was they were surprised that you took it. And <laughs> I know even uh, kind of members of his team thought, nah, I don't, we don't think Sean's going to take this fight. Are you talking about his manager, probably? You're a former manager, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, probably takes, you know, 30% of Peter's purse and his bonus. Mm -hmm. um, Peter's 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five maybe. I, I'm, 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 I think... It, yeah, I'm surprised they took the fight. Interesting. Would you, a lot, a lot of people would say that uh, this is coming quick for you, though. It is quick. I mean, to go from the level of competition that you were, everyone freaked out when it's like, oh, Sean's going to fight a top 10. I mean, Piotr Jan was, I had him ranked pound for pound in the top five, you know, yeah. recently. Like, like yeah. does this feel slightly quick to you, or you're coming at it from a completely different perspective, I'm sure. I have Peter ranked very high, too, pound for pound. I think, uh, you know, he has a pretty dominating win over Aljo in my in my mind that first fight mm -hmm. who's the current champion you know as a win over Corey Sandhagen who's you know super high level the, his performance over Jose Aldo was one of my favorites that was a very sweet fight so yeah I'm fighting one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world and uh, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity I believe that I will rise to the occasion and the better guys I fight the better I I'll be able to show more of my skills I haven't really been able to show you know that Pedro Munoz fight. I think I was just getting started. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't think. I think statistically, if you look at it, he didn't hit me in the head once or the body. Landed a couple leg kicks. I feel like the, the kicks that I checked hurt him more than the kicks that he actually landed. So you know, I feel like I was dominating o o over Pedro. So I think I'm going to show my true skill set over against uh, Peter. So when you look back at that at that Pedro fight, you've been very clear that you feel like you won. You just said you dominated him. So you were very, very happy with, with that performance. You thought no, 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 not at all. I was just, I, I think I would have been if it, the fight kept playing on. Um, I, I mean, I guess when I say dominating, I just, I, he didn't land anything. Mm -hmm. He didn't hit me. Um, you know, I landed a good couple right hands. One right hand hit him right in the eye, and he, he thought that one was a poke. Um, swole, swole his eye up, um, landed a couple body shots, some nice nice teeps. One he pretended to hit him in the nuts, which didn't. Um, the eye poke, I mean, you've, you you watch the replay, might have hit a little bit, not enough to stop a fight. You know, he made sure that eye doctor, that he, he made sure he said, I can't see, I can't see. He made sure he said that multiple times. 
because he knew the fight would be stopped. He didn't walk around going, oh, like trying to, you know, open his eye and, and, and make sure, you know, it's good. Um, Jared Cannonier took an eye, the eye poke, like that later that night. That was way worse than that, and and he made sure he could keep fighting. So, you know, I think I think mentally I just broke him. What what did you make of that that first round? Like, kind of what were you expecting the fight to look like, and what were you feeling in, in, in the first round with Pedro? Um, he felt slow. He he didn't come forward as much as I thought he would. Um, he uh, kept he he kept more of a distance than I thought too. Um, I think he he realized I was faster than I than he thought I was going to be. Uh, I thought it was interesting. He kept switching stances with me. Uh, he wanted to be if I was southpaw, he wanted to go southpaw. If I was orthodox, he wanted to go orthodox. Uh, I thought that, that was interesting. Um, yeah, I thought he was going to come forward a little more, uh, but he was as slow as I thought he was going to be. Mm. Yeah, because it's interesting because a lot of us from the outside would say that we didn't. I, I think it's, it, that's an easy fight to kind of say we didn't learn much, of, yeah. you know, um, that it was kind of a slow first round. Yeah. Um, but to me, like, like in listening to you talk about it, it kind of felt like you were figuring him out, though. Like you, you, that was kind of a learning first round. And then, like you said, you were only getting started in the second round. So did you feel like you, you proved something against Pedro Munoz? Did, like, do you feel like, like that was a good litmus test of, again, this, this whole idea of like Sean's going to fight a guy in the top ten? Like, did you feel like you really proved something there to yourself even? A little bit. Not not as much as I would have wanted to. I think, to, if anything, to the right to the fans or whatever, I proved that I can check a kick. Like, I didn't know how to do that before. Um, but I was checking some, some kicks that I really, really feel like hurt him bad. Like, I've felt his feet. Sometimes he's landing with his feet on my shin. Um, even the ones that were going shin to shin, I could feel, like, it hurt him. Um, that's probably the only thing we really got out of that fight is that I can learned how to check a kick uh i didn't get hit also like i don't think i've been hit in my last two fights so i don't know i mean he was considered yeah a guy in the top 10 and uh the fight just didn't look looking back on it wasn't super entertaining it was kind of I, I love watching my fights back with this one I, I really didn't watch back too much mm. um that night you were obviously critical of the judges um i think I don't know what your really opinion is on, on like the scoring system or judges, and I know you like to put fights away anyway, but I think that uh, sometimes fights are just hard to score, especially rounds in which like not a lot happens. You know, yeah. like you said, it wasn't a super entertaining fight because there wasn't a lot of back and forth in the first mm -hmm. round. Did you learn anything about that? Like some of these fights come down to just small details in one round. You know, did, did you take anything like? Because I know that you were surprised when you saw the two judges didn't give you that round. Like, is there any kind of adjustment that you need to make from that? Or did you feel like that was just bad judging? That's just going to be part of the sport. Yeah. It's funny, like, everyone will just listen to whatever the judges say. I just, for me, it's just whatever, however, whatever I'm, whatever I think makes more sense to me. So, like, I said I won that fight because those judges have n never taken a kickboxing class. They do not know how to, what a checked kick is. Mm -hmm. So when he threw a kick and I checked it and it hurt him really bad, they're like, they marked that down for him. Mm -hmm. And then people listen to the judges because the judges said that that landed, so they're going to give that to him, so he won that round. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't the, the, the fans listen to an elite-level striker like myself and say, you know, no, 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 I won that round. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to listen to these three judges that have never taken a kickboxing class in their life. It makes no sense to me. Um, if you give that round to him, it, it, you literally should not be allowed to judge a fight ever again. He didn't hit me once. He landed a couple leg kicks, but I, like I said, I guarantee the kicks that I checked hurt him more than the ones that he landed. Mm -hmm. I cracked him with the right hand that swole, uh, made his eyes swell up. I was landing good teep kicks to the body. Um, yeah, those judges, I, I feel bad talking about the judges because now it's like, Next time I fight in Vegas, they're going to be like, oh, you lost that round because yeah, yeah. you talk shit. So I'm going to have to really make sure I put people away <laughs> in Vegas. Um, it sucks. We've always had a problem with judging, uh, not me specifically. Like you said, I usually put people's lights out. Um, 
but they got to do something with the judging, whether it's former fighters or, or just someone that's taken a kickboxing class. Maybe they have to be at least the purple belt in jiu-jitsu um, because these judges are just random people, right? I mean, I guess I don't know that. I just, I'm just assuming by the way they judged most fights. So it's frustrating that it's the UFC, the highest level of fighting. And, and you're given some, like, I think that one, one, one judge scored it for me. Yeah. So that guy, you know, we're not, I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about the other two. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. Does it get in your head at all, though? Like, like maybe if you're, it, let's say you're in a situation where you're checking some kicks, but the, the rounds could be potentially close. Like, does it make you more aggressive? Like, does it actually alter your way of thinking on how you're going to compete? Uh, I don't know. I mean, go, so I remember going into this, like, going to sit on my stool, you know, even Tim was telling me, he's like, all right, you won that round. Like, in my head, 100%, I was like, I just won that round. I didn't get hit, right? I'm like, there's no way you could. Yeah, I'm, I'm one up right now. It's one zero. Um, maybe open scoring would have, I would have, I probably would have shit myself on the stool if I seen I lost that round. Um, I don't know if it really changes. You know, I, I guess you can go in there and just slap people's thighs with your feet and just point fight. Like, that's basically... I mean, how you can win rounds, I guess. You can just slap their thigh with your foot. Maybe that could change how how, how some people fight. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be the case with, with Piotr Jan. Uh, no. I want to ask you, technique-wise, just technique. I mean, obviously, kickboxer, you and I have talked about, like, that's a fun fight. That's a fight mm -hmm. that you were always thinking was going to happen someday. But kind of getting into more, and without giving him, of course, what you're looking at away, when you look at his technique, what are you, what are you really seeing? <sighs> I think he claims to be a master of boxing, which, you know, might not be far off. Great boxer, a um, little bit slow starter, comes forward, 5-4. Um, you know, I don't think it's, it's going to be much of a, there's going to be much grappling involved. I, I do believe it'll be a kickboxing fight. Um, He's got a super high guard. He likes to, uh, you know, double up his jab, throw a right hand, and like kind of walk forward to the southpaw, throw off that. You know, he's he's very well rounded. It's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a very interesting fight. He seems like uh, one of those guys that, um, like, there's flashy guys. You know, there's unpredictable guys, and there are guys that are just so their basics are just yeah. ingrained in them. Is yeah. that how you see it? And is is that harder to prepare for, or or just difficult, like different to prepare for than a guy who's maybe. He he can throw some flashy stuff. I mean, that Corey fight, you know, he threw some pretty nice spinning kicks and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's got the he's got the basics dialed in. You know, hands up, straight punches. You know, that's that's what I what I preach too. Is, well, maybe not hands up so much, but you know, straight punches. Mm -hmm. he, he's a mat, He's he's very good at the basics, which is you know, someone who's very dangerous. What about um, just his mentality in a competitor? Like different guys are kind of wired differently as a competitor, right? What do you see in him? As yeah, a little Russian assassin. Look, he's a killer. The, the fight against Jose Aldo, you know, shows his mentality perfectly. Yeah. He's, he's hands down the toughest guy to date that I have fought, and uh, you know, might ever fight. Peter's the killer, and I'm sure we're gonna fight multiple times. I he mm. think he's 28, 29. He's probably. You know, we're both going to be entering our prime in the next couple of years. We'll probably fight uh, more than just this time. I thought someday I would cover a Sean O'Malley fight that was not in Vegas. Yeah. I wasn't sure it was going to be in Abu Dhabi. What did you think about it being in Abu Dhabi? I've, my last, like, ten fights have been in Vegas. Um, and I've always said, you know, I just want to fight in Vegas. But when an opportunity like this comes, you know, you got to take it. Uh, I think it will be really cool to expand my fan base over there. Uh, I think I'm going to really, really like Abu Dhabi, and I think it's, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities that pop up when I when I go over there, and I think it, you know, could turn into a second home, might be there more than I thought I would really? ever be, and we'll see. <laughs> um, it's very early on, but since you haven't done it, um, like, do you think you'll go out, like, some guys go out, and, like, super early, some guys go to Dubai first to finish up their camps, like, what do you think your strategy will be in terms of getting over there now? I think I'm going to head over there early October. Okay. Yeah, early October, October fourth, fifth, couple two and a half weeks early. And just camp out in like the 
a hotel or, or stay yeah. in Dubai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay, in the, yeah. stay at the, go, get to the hotel and just stay at the same hotel. You think you'll get this fight and then enjoy the holidays and, and we'll see you in, in 2023 for a monster year? Is that kind of how you're thinking? Oh, yeah. October 22nd and then I'm, you know, I, I feel like I always fight in like December, so I never really get to enjoy the later half of the year. So I think October 22nd, you know, two fights this year will be money. Mm-hmm. Last thing I have for you is... Um, you, you, you have been such a confident person. I think that plays into your success in this sport. I think obviously you're looking at a situation um, more so than any other fight in your career where you could confront doubt more so potentially, like your own self-doubt. Like, do you think that that will be something that you deal with, like as this fight comes closer, perhaps more so than your others? That this guy is a favorite. This guy is a former champion. You know, there are people who are saying, like, oh, my God, I can't. O'Malley, is, this is the end of the hype train. You know, you see all those comments out there already. Like, do you think that that's going to be something that you are going to have to deal with and address? No, I think the closer the fight gets, the more confident I'll become. Just because I'll get back into camp, get dialed in, get back to sparring, get back to eating perfect, sleeping perfect, just getting everything dialed in. Um, you know, I think I'm just going to get more confident as the fight gets closer. And then fight night, there's going to be, you know, I'm going to win that fight. And... I'm all every fight I go into, I'm I'm okay with losing. I'm not attached to I have to win this fight. I'm gonna be world champ someday, 100%. Um, you know, I, I've never been scared of losing. Um, so I, I think the closer the fight gets, the more confident I'm gonna become. Yeah, makes sense, man. Well, uh, I, I'm I'm thrilled that you came out to London to to sit down with us. Looking forward to a uh, good luck in camp. Thank you. And then yeah, we will see you in October, man. Huge. Fight. Thank you, Brett. Thanks, Sean. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.